Hello everyone, it's Miss Angela from the Fort Worth Public Library. Welcome back to another Fort Worth Nature Center Discovery Club story time. Today we are talking about fur. Did you know that the kind of covering an animal has can tell you a lot about them? People wear sweaters when it's cold outside to keep them warm. Mammals have hair or fur, birds have feathers, reptiles have dry scales, amphibians have soft moist skin, and fish have wet slimy scales. Our song is a bit of a game. I'll sing the chorus, then you can sing along with me when we ask fur, feathers, or scales. Are you ready? Fur, feathers, or scales. Fur, feathers, or scales. Deer, raccoons, bison on trails. Fur, feathers, or scales. Fur. Fur, feathers, or scales. Fur, feathers, or scales. Ducks, owls, pelicans, and quails. Fur, feathers, or scales. Feathers. Fur, feathers, or scales. Fur, feathers, or scales. Snakes, fish, alligators with tails. Fur, feathers, or scales. Scales. Great job, everyone. Think about some of your favorite animals and decide, do they have fur, feathers, or scales? Our story for today is called The Lion and the Ostrich Tricks, and it's from the Maasai people in Africa. Once upon a time, Mama Ostrich had two baby chicks. She was very proud of them. Lion was lonely and watched Mama Ostrich with her two babies. Why should she have two babies and I have not even one? I will catch them and then I will not be lonely. Ostrich wings are not big enough to fly with, but ostrich legs are long and perfect for running very fast. Mama Ostrich taught her chicks to run fast over the ground. Don't go too far, she warned. But the baby ostriches were so excited to try out their legs that they ran very far indeed. Oh no, they cried, we are lost. Lion was lying in her den nearby. She overheard them and reached out her paw to sweep them into her den. Welcome home, my children, she said. You don't look anything like our mother, said the chicks. You have fur, four feet, and no feathers. Lion stood up on her two feet and was very kind to the chicks. You are my chicks now. Mama Ostrich searched and searched and finally found Lion leading the chicks. My chicks, she cried. Oh no, said Lion, my chicks. Mama Ostrich was scared of Lion. Oh, promise you won't eat them, she said. Why would I eat my own chicks, asked Lion. Mama Lion said, come with me, chickies, and they followed behind her. Mama Ostrich followed behind them. As they walked, they met Gazelle. Mama Ostrich said, Gazelle, you have long and powerful horns. Look, Lion has stolen my chicks. Will you please help me? And Gazelle said, I wouldn't argue with Lion even if she said that the moon was her baby. Then they met Hyena. Hyena, said Mama Ostrich, you have very sharp teeth. Look, Lion has stolen my chicks. Will you please help me? And Hyena said, the babies are following Lion. Babies follow their mothers, so they must belong to her. Mama Ostrich was beginning to think that she would never get her chicks back. Then they met Mongoose. Mongoose, you are very small, but I know you are clever and fearless, said Mama Ostrich. Look, Lion has stolen my chicks. Will you please help me? Now Mongoose was clever and fearless and called over to Lion. Lion, give the chicks back to their mother. I am their mother said Lion. Mongoose cried, Lion lies, we all have eyes. Lion may stand on two feet now, but she looks absurd. She is no bird. When has anyone ever heard that someone with fur can have babies with feathers? Uh-uh, the chicks are ostriches. Lion was so surprised to hear this from the little mongoose that she froze for just a second. But that was all the time mongoose needed to scurry back into his burrow. Lion lunged, but she was too late, and she could not fit through the hole to chase mongoose. As Lion paced outside the burrow, Mama Ostrich rounded up her chicks and they all ran very, very fast all the way home. Lion was left alone waiting outside Mongoose's burrow, roaring, I'll give you fur and feathers. 
Mongoose's burrow had a tunnel at the bottom, and Mongoose ran far through the tunnel and did not even hear Lion. Lion eventually gave up and realized that maybe fur and feathers were not meant to be. She began to look for another furry lion so that she would not be lonely anymore. The end. Thanks for joining us, everyone. It's time to pass it over to Mr. Michael at the Nature Center to talk more about fur. See you next time. Hey, guys. Welcome back. Glad you can come again and meet us this week for Discovery Club. Miss Angela, thank you again for your story time. We really appreciate appreciate that. I know everyone viewing it uh, sees that's great value. So thanks for uh, sharing that. Love love that time. So we're going to talk about fur today. Uh, what better time to talk about fur than winter time? As it's getting colder, animals are going to rely on that. Now, uh, last week we talked about birds. Well, we talked about ducks. We, but which are birds. We talked about the different types of feathers and how they can keep them warm, like those down feathers. Well, this week we're going to focus on fur and the importance of fur and how, how animals use fur. Now, when we think about what animal group uses fur, which animal group do you suppose uses fur? Birds, mammals, reptiles, amphibians, or fish? Which ones do you think? Which group of animals would use fur no 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 not reptiles not the reptiles they have scales yeah mammals exactly mammals mammals use or have coats of hair or fur over their bodies and that's one of the characteristics of mammals is the fur now i have you can kind of see right here you can barely see a little little bit of the fur right i have some fur uh <coughs> excuse me that i want to show you now before i do that all what I'm about to show you, these are animals. We did not kill them. We did not hurt them or harm them. <coughs> Fortunately, we, we, uh, we gained access to them. Or we bought them uh, from uh, places where, uh, again, they didn't hurt them or kill them or harm them. So I don't want you thinking that, okay? Uh, I don't want you to be grossed out either, okay? You may, you know, some people are like, ew, that's gross. I'm looking at dead animals. and But I don't want you to see it that way. What I want you to see is... Uh, what animals um, have fur and I want you to see the examples of them okay I want you to think it that way I don't want you to think about ooh that's an animal or ooh or oh I hope he didn't hurt that animal I don't want that okay because yours truly would never do that I I, I would never do that can't do it. I love animals too much I just couldn't do it but uh, I have examples to show you so fur are found on mammals okay so can you name some mammals? Yeah, those are all great. Foxes, coyote, bobcat, deer. Yeah, you made some, those are really great, great choices. Okay? So when we talk about fur, we want, we associate fur, especially with wintertime. Now animals around here like deer, fox, coyote, bobcat, beaver for that matter, they don't leave Fort Worth. Now, we talked about last week how birds migrate. Like, we have the ducks that are migrating in during the wintertime. And then whenever it comes summertime, they migrate back and migrate away to uh, the northern parts of the country where it's a little cooler than it is here in Texas. I would not define Texas as being cool at all during the summer, uh, even when it's cold fronts that come through. So, these animals don't migrate. So, in wintertime, they stay here in Fort Worth. But we do have cold temperatures. There are nights and uh, multiple nights where it could be in the in the teens, you know, 13 degrees, 15 degrees, and so forth. So they have to adapt. If they're not going to move, they have to adapt. All right. And one of the ways that they adapt is by growing during the winter time. They grow a really thick coat of fur. Okay, because of more hair. And think about your dog. Your dog is a mammal, right? Uh, during the summertime, uh, or as we approach summer, oh, my dogs, and they shed like you would not believe. And, they, and they're shedding their hair, and that's their, their body's response to the change in temperature. It's getting hotter, so I'm trying to, it's like you taking a jacket off. Take my jacket off. Wintertime is putting your jacket back on, or you can't pin it on. And that's what uh, mammals uh, with fur do. They get this thick coat, it grows in really thick, keep them warm, and then they shed it. And lose some of that during the spring and summertime so 
Uh, that's the functionality and the purpose of fur, is to keep them nice and warm, uh, keep their body uh, warm. Now there's lots of examples I want to show you. Now one of the things I want to show you, uh, this right here, anybody want to guess, looking at the color, what kind of animal is this from? Okay, once again, please don't look at this and think, oh no, he hurt him, or ew, that's gross. Think of it as, oh, that's a really cool representative of that particular animal. And this one has like an orangish color. So this right here is from a red fox, which we have in our area. Uh, I live up in Parker County, and I know we get foxes. I get foxes in my, in my yard every once in a while. So uh, a red fox. Now, fox and other mammals, they have different layers of hair or fur. You'll hear me say both. The, the top layer, this orange color you see, it's really thick. Okay, feel it. Go ahead, rub it, feel it. It has a really thick, uh, it's coarse, it's thick. It's for protection, it helps protect them. Uh, also takes, keeps them nice and dry. But they also, if you look on the side here, you see how these are pokey? They're not pokey, they're not, ow, 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 they're not hurting me, but they, they almost look pokey. But then you also have this kind of soft, like a brown, it's a thick bunch of fur there. Kind of like, uh, so anyway, that, that fur there keeps them nice and warm. And the comparison I want to make, it was just one week ago, we talked about uh, uh, ducks, and how they had those contour feathers that let the water repel off of them, right? Well, same thing with this, it keeps them warm, kept them warm as well, and dry if you will. This keeps them nice and dry. And then, uh, like on the bird, had those down feathers close to their body. Well, they have that uh, softer hair or fur closer to the body to keep them nice and warm. So, um, they're different, birds and mammals, but one and the same as far as how they combat cold temperatures. So, um, again, mammals don't, they don't, these particular mammals in our area don't migrate. Even though our winters, their winters are pretty mild here in Texas and compared to up to Canada and the northern states and so forth. But still cold enough where they have to make changes and that's getting a thick hair, a uh, coat, a fur to survive. Uh, another mammal we have in our area, um, I was camping with my son um, a couple weeks ago and we would hear these at night and we hear these in our backyard as well. Uh, they're uh, at our house, coyote. And coyotes actually have the same thing. You have this, this thick, coarse hair, and the underneath there, more soft, patchy-like hair to keep their body warm. So we have lots of examples of mammals in our area that use their fur, um, the, the different types of fur they have in different ways. Keep them dry, keep them warm, much like the birds. But this next one I want to show you, this right here is from a deer. Okay, this is deer. Notice it's not very thick, right? You look at this uh, this coyote here. Look how thick and long that hair is, right? Or fur. You'll hear me say hair and fur. You know, they're interchangeable. But look at this deer. It's not very thick. In fact, if you look at the bottom, if you look underneath, they don't have, they're more the follicles, the more hair-like, like the top part of that uh, coyote or the fox. And I showed you underneath that has more of that bunched up um, um, fur to keep them nice and warm. They don't really have that. So how do they stay warm? Hmm. Well, I'm glad you asked. Deer have a really special uh, a way of staying warm. So they're here during the winter months. And they get a thicker coat. Yeah, they get longer. The follicles, the hair to get longer. And I consider this more hair than I do fur like that. So... But it's the same concept. I wanted to talk a little bit about the differences too. So instead of having all that fur at the bo uh, by their body, what they do at the base of each one of these little hairs, if you will, that you find on the deer, the follicle or the part that's right there that attaches it to the skin, there's like a, you can't see it, you need a magnifying lens, but like a pocket, okay? And what happens is because it's right on their body, in the body, in the skin, where, they're, where they generate all their warmth, inside of all those little pockets, all that warm air gets trapped in it. Imagine on a cold day, your hands are cold, you don't have gloves, but you have like a hand warmer. Oh, those are nice, aren't they? 
put a hand warmer in your hand and your pockets and you're like, oh, that feels so good. You, in your pockets, you have your hand warmer. Well, inside of those little openings, gaps in the follicles of those hairs on the deer, warmth from the deer gets trapped in there like a little hand warmer. And look at how many of these they have. Look, just right here, just on the screen, I'm not showing you the entire deer. All those little areas that they can trap all that warm air and they can stay warm. So that's how they stay warm. A little different than some of the other mammals like coyotes and foxes. Um, they, they trap their heat and that allows them to stay nice and warm during the winter months, okay? So another mammal we have in our area that has fur is this animal here. Has a nice tail on it. Yep, that's a beaver. Okay, this is a beaver, all right? And beavers are very much like the fox and the coyote. They have this coarse hair. Now, they have uh, an even bigger challenge of staying warm than, say, a coyote or a fox in our area because they're in the water. And as you know, uh, the water is pretty cold in the winter months. So water is cold, and it can get on your body and stay on it. So these coarse hairs we have here um, keep it nice and dry. And then just like the fox and the um, a coyote I showed you, they do have a, a patch, like almost a patch of a layer of hair that keeps them nice and warm so they can stay warm and they stay dry. So you can see fur plays an important role in the life of mammals here uh, at the Fort Worth Nature Center Refuge because they don't migrate. And once again, if you don't migrate uh, to find a food source, then uh, you have to adapt. Now, as I've said before in the past when we talk about ducks and migration, and I've said it today, well, these animals don't migrate. They stay here. Well, one thing I want to make sure I, I, I make it clear, they don't migrate because of the things they like to eat are here. For example, deer. Well, what does a deer like to eat? Let me, let me find some deer food. Twigs, branches seed pods, um, lee, you know, small leaves and so forth. So those, these are always around during the winter time. They're falling down and deer are nom, 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 nom. delicious, okay? Foxes are eating uh, small um, rodents like rats and so forth. Coyotes are eating uh, rabbits, bunnies who don't need to migrate as well because they're eating, there's not, ground's not covered in snow so the bunnies have plenty of vegetation to eat. So the whole wood, the Woo. The whole food web is all together. It's 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 enacted here. It's 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 just moving. It's it's prevalent here during our winter months. We don't have snow that changes the the landscape and changes how the food web um, and those interactions between animals uh, occur. So so they're always going to be here because of food source. Now because they're here and because the food source is here doesn't mean the temperatures are going to change. It's still going to get cold, so didn't they have that fur to help them? So I want you to understand that. And I want you to be confused and think and think I'm I'm um, um counter uh what's the word? I, I was saying before migration they move because of the food source, not because it's cold. And I started off saying, well, they stay, they don't migrate because they have thick coats. Well, I want to make sure we're clear. The animals here don't migrate mammals such as deer, bobcats, and the foxes and so forth because there's food here. The winter's a mild. And they have the ability to have thick coats to help them survive those winter months here. So, just want to clear that up. Animals migrate because they can't find food. If they can find food in a winter, in the winter months in a cold area, they just adapt by having a thicker coat and use those fur to keep them warm. There you go. Just want to make sure we're clear on that. Um, now let's talk about some of the features. You know, we talked about uh, fur uh, keeping you nice and warm, keeping you dry. There's one other feature that's very, very important. And it was very much like the ducks from last week. And it involves seeds. Not so much eating the seeds and going to the bathroom. Oh, there I go again. I'm talking about animals going to the bathroom. Go ahead, laugh it up. Just like last week, laugh it up. I know every time I do a presentation, talk to that animal, uh, animal poops or whatever, they just, kids, go crazy. Something about it, right? All right. All right. You got it out of your system. Okay. We're, we're back. Okay. Good. We're back. We're back. 
So, the difference is a mammal with this thick coat, and uh, here I'll use another uh, example. Uh, this right here is a, a Virginia opossum. Opossum, very soft, very soft. But that thick can get coat. <laughs> That's a thick coat, not a thick can get coat. This has a very thick coat. And what happens is as it's moving around, climbing around, um, it can get uh, seeds stuck to it, like uh, sticky ones. And it gets stuck to the, uh, the fur here. And as they're moving around, they're falling off. And they fall into the soil, get some moisture, some sun, they germinate, and there you go. They're spreading seeds and pl spreading plants. So reptile, wow, mammals, mammals. They have a really cool ability to disperse seeds by using that thick coat of fur, okay? So that's another feature. Not only keeps them nice and warm for all those non-migratory animals such as foxes and deer and so forth, but also uh, they can spread seed. And when you spread seed, seed and the different plants, that is an important role or important aspect of a food web because the more plants you have, or the greater diversity of plants you have, then the more animals, more wildlife, and the greater diversity of wildlife, which is even more important than just having lots of animals. It's the diversity. Every animal plays a different role in that environment. You have berry-eating plants, you have carnivores, omnivores, herbivores, and they all um, have um, roles in that ecosystem. And without the diversity of that, is it, if it's animal A's job to take care of the forest and eat the forest and or the trees uh, from the forest and nibble on the, the branches and so forth, and then animal B has this other role, when you take those roles away, then the ecosystem can be affected by that in a negative way. So um, these animals play an important role in maintaining habitats, that's for sure. Once again, I've carried on and I've carried on, but I hope you enjoyed it. I love talking to you guys. I love talking to you guys out there in, a, in our virtual world and sharing a little bit about nature and discovering nature. So we talked about uh, fur, the, fe the features or the importance of fur. We talked about uh, how they cover mammals. Uh, we talked about how uh, these animals don't migrate, so they have to adapt by having thick coats of fur. We talked about how it keeps them warm and dry, spread seeds and all different things like that. So now uh, I want to show you some pictures of some of our local mammals. So. Um, I don't want you just seeing these furs. I want you to see the animal itself. So uh, sit back and enjoy some of these images uh, from our volunteer photographers. And once again, they pulled through with some wonderful photos. I hope you enjoyed them. And I want to encourage you to come out to the Nature Center or visit a green space near you so you can potentially see some of these guys, you know, like the possum, uh, we'll see raccoon. We've seen just about every animal, mammal for that matter, and reptiles, amphibians, and birds uh, that are found in this area here at the Nature Center. And so I encourage you to come out and check these, uh, these uh, animals out, look at their fur, and uh, see how they're using their fur. Dispersing seeds, staying warm, staying dry, whatever the case is. So, all right, guys. Well, I want to go ahead and conclude our Discovery Club. As always, I cannot, today, I cannot talk. I don't know what it is. But uh, as usual, I enjoy your company. I enjoy you tuning in. I hope you share this with your friends. Uh, and tell your friends about all the things you, you learn here at Discovery Club. And I can't wait until the day comes when you and I can meet in person here at the Nature Center and uh, talk about nature. I love nature and love sharing about it, so I hope you love learning about it and hearing about it. Uh, with that said, uh, I hope you have a wonderful day, 
and encourage you to get outside and discover nature. And uh, we'll see you next week. Bye, guys.